Hello, Sandra Follier. I'm here with my close friend Lydia Rose, who's an equine artist, a dressage rider, and a performer or dancer, as you've seen on my website and all the photos of me with my Frisian Dow. Lydia is the is the dancer performer in those photos. Um, Lydia and I have known each other for a very long time, ever since I was 13, and you were. It was like nine or ten. Nine or ten. Uh, we've performed together for over 15 years with the horses and her mother Carolyn owns Isaac Royal Farm which is where we are right now in their private homes beautiful house and we're gonna talk to Lydia about how she got started with horses and in her artwork um, and all of our our experiences performing together so Lydia <laughs> um, where did you grow up? You didn't grow up here in Dover, Foxcroft. No, um, I grew up in Massachusetts. Um, my mom had me down there, and when she was pregnant with me, she decided that she wanted to have horses. So mm -hmm. that's how my life started, on a horse farm with my mom. Same as I am now. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, that was the thing. She really, really wanted me to live my life when growing up with horses. And I always hear all the stories of you on your little pony. You had like like a little mini, or was he just a small pony? No, he was a Welsh pony. So Welsh he was. Pony. Uh, I, I'm. He was probably around thirteen hands, you know. But he was a nice little pony. But oh, he was it's not a <laughs> Like so, are. but we were both aggressive. So mm -hmm. we have a lot of funny stories. We, you know, he was sort of like, uh, really did not want to teach lessons with other kids. So mm -hmm. he would buck them off or run. But with me, you know, I was a tough little kid. So <laughs> him and I had, you know, an understanding. Didn't and he like clothesline you oh, off? He, in a me. <laughs> he scraped me off under a two by four once. <laughs> He pulled me off over his head and trampled me, but like we, I, I just jumped right I didn't care. Yeah. We, I loved him so much. Yeah. And I mean, I, I was young. You How know. old were you when you rode him? I probably started when I was four or five. Mm -hmm. I know I was five when I went on my first fox hunt yeah. with him. And wow. Yeah. And that's like had, one year from now for Ivy. Yeah, that's like, yeah, She's like four. a year and a half. She'll and Lydia be. has a beautiful little daughter named Ivy who also rides and is a little artist too and yeah. a little dancer. <laughs> she loves so cute. So yeah, can you imagine great. her like ride? Well, you have no, a little crazy. miniature pony, Ob. Yeah, beautiful little style. Uh, he's gelded now, right? Little yes, pony. Yes, yeah, so, so, so cute. I don't know. I can't imagine the things that I did. I'm a little <laughs> bit. I think I'm more a little bit more cautious than yeah. a mother. But yeah, I remember. I, I was five years old. I did half of a fox hunt, and he had side reins on to keep him from grazing. Uh huh. Um, and and pulling me down, but he decided he could do it anyways, and he pulled the saddle oh. over his <laughs> every time he would go to eat. Yes. And I remember like a little kid holding on, like no, come on. Let's go. <laughs> but yeah, we did a lot of crazy stuff, yeah. and that's how I grew up. And and the first performance, you know, we were talking in the in, I did an interview with your mom last week, and she was we were talking about her first performance in Massachusetts. And did you ride CJ in that, or did you? I'm not. Sh yeah, I th I have photos. My mom would know better, but I do have photos of me dressed up as like the baby Snow White. She right, the right. Snow White yeah. play, mm -hmm. and I wasn't like the big Snow White, but I was like the little baby on the pony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and she said you did the dancing with the split leaps when you yeah, were like when I was really little. young. Yeah. So you've always been able to do that. Yeah, I always took dance classes when mm -hmm. I was younger, so it was something I always loved. So it was very dramatic. And that's what everybody comments on when they see all the photos is the one of you doing the split leap next to the horse and you're like, Where is her back foot? And you look and it's like more, almost more than a split and Everyone's always amazed, but you've always been flexible. And yeah, I mean, I guess I've always been able to do it. I, it's not like something, I'm not a trained dancer. I didn't continue dancing through my teens, but I've always loved to dance. So it's something I've done. So I, I'm surprised when I look at the photos. <laughs> I didn't realize, I mean, I know I can do a split leap, but I look at, I'm like, oh, I didn't wow. realize it was straight out and it was right. that high. Yeah, but no, so it's really fun. I, I think it's helped me to realize, you know, how much I've missed the dancing and how much I love it. Yeah, and we and we both got started in 
the belly dancing to do with the horses and the performance. We had the Isaac Royal Equestrian Theater pretty much every year for about 15 years and yeah. we incorporated, like I got into dancing a little bit and then um, Liddy got into it and is much better at it. <laughs> more of the like tribal style, the more intricate. Um, I just like the veils and the wings. <laughs> And um, and then we incorporated that with the horse. Everything came back to the horses. Yeah, it like, came what back can to we go do right. and bring it in? Yeah, and we keep upgrading that, and we have a lot more ideas. I'm really excited to to try this. You know, when we when we get a chance. But um, what was I going to say? Oh, I was going to go back to when you were. You guys moved to Maine. How old were you when you moved to Maine? Um, I think I was eight. You were like eight years old. Yeah. And did, did you, uh, we talked about this last time about like when you started drawing, because I, I didn't really remember you thinking you would be an artist when we were younger. I mean, I drew and you drew and we did some art. There was a lot of, into it. yeah, a lot of kids here were really good um, and all sort of into artwork. I, I always did draw and, but through my teens, I didn't spend a lot of, time doing it you mm. know it wasn't something that I focused a lot of time on and I think it was I was younger than a lot of the people here and everybody was so good and I just I really didn't actually think that I was very good at drawing at I drawing. thought I was yeah, mediocre or whatever mm. and I didn't think I had any sort of extra skill at it but um, my biggest thing was I would just keep coming back to it you know like right. something would just pull me back to it I would want to work on it and then I would, the biggest thing for me is I would see a painting that was really beautiful to me or anything, mm -hmm. you know, and it would just pull so much emotion out of me. I would want to cry when I saw a painting and think like, I really want to be able to do that. Like that yeah. is something that I would love to do. And so I just sort of decided um, when I wanted to decide to go to college, you know, I really want to do this, mm -hmm. and I didn't even know that there was a degree for um, painting that you could go to at any school, and I found it, you know, right mm -hmm. in Maine, and I thought, okay, that's what I'm going to do. But you went to New Hampshire. I did afterwards, for, yeah. Okay. But yeah. I, I surprised everybody, sort of, like, mm -hmm. oh, she's going to go to school she's for art? Oh, that's to college. sort of, you right. know, interesting. Right. I don't think anybody really just expected me to choose that as my major. Right, right. Um, but as soon as I did, as soon as I went to school, I really, I, I was like, this is where I want, what I want yeah. to do, you know, this is where I belong. I loved it. Mm -hmm. I learned so much and I felt like that that was, you know, my passion. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. It's very interesting because, because you and I and, and a lot of, some of the other girls from the barn too, we always kind of had interest in the same things. We yeah. all like the riding. We all like art and we all like dancing, you know, it's like a little group of us. Yeah. And, but each one of us takes it in a little bit of a different direction, which yeah. is so neat because that's what I love about art is you're, you, you, you can't be competitive no. with art or anything artistic, which writing's artistic and dancing's artistic. Yeah. And it's just an expression of your unique yeah, talent. Yeah, everybody so has such a, a unique personality, you mm -hmm. know, as long as you're being really true to that, you, right. you're just who you are, mm -hmm. you know, and people are drawn to that, I think. You know. Do you think looking back like five years ago you would imagine what you were doing right now? Was this what you wanted to be doing or do you think that um, you surprised yourself a little bit? I'm, I'm, I think I'm surprised. Um, I've had a really good year this year mm -hmm. and five years ago is was when I started college so I was sort of headed in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> <Mimic>. <laughs> Um, I was headed in that dir direction, but probably if you'd asked me um, eight years ago, mm -hmm. I don't even think I would have been going to school for art, you know, mm -hmm. that was a right. surprise, yeah. you know, so, um, but it's really become you know, my life and it's actually gone a lot faster than I expected, mm -hmm. which has been great, you know, and all the support that I've had around here has been wonderful. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great group. That's yeah. what I was just thinking about the art, how we take it different directions. Like, I would have never thought I would be basing my online business around, like, calligraphy designs on a t-shirt. Like, yeah. I, that's just kind of, I kept doing different things and that's the direction it went and that's what people liked. But 
I, I don't think when I did my first calligraphy design, I actually did back in high school, I did a little advanced study in high school, you know, yeah. but it was on the calligraphy, like Chinese calligraphy and the bamboo ink and the, and I still have my original one. It's very similar to the spirit horse thing. And I was yeah. like, oh, I did that when I was like 16. I was like, who knew, you know, yeah, that, that that would become later. It's so neat. So you really don't know, but no. once you sort of just follow right what, where life pushes you and then it ends up you know to you look back and go oh it was always in me it was it always meant to it. be that way yeah as long as you don't fight it yeah and that's the hard part and being brave I yes it's yeah. one of the biggest things it's like don't don't quit you know mm -hmm. there's been lots of times it's it's not easy to be an artist you no. know it takes a lot of like you're bearing something that is very vulnerable and it takes a lot of bravery and a lot of guts to just continue like mm -hmm. no matter how many times you, you hit a wall and you think this is not what I should be doing you just sort of keep going if it's what you love and things happen eventually yeah you know that's what's the difference when you're doing something that's your passion as why I, I love listening to like TED talks on, TV, yeah. on YouTube yeah. and things like that and they're always saying like you're basically failing your way to success you try yeah. something you don't do it right as long as you learn from it and you don't quit, you know, being yeah. persistent and you just keep keep going. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think that's the thing because you have to make all the mistakes you're going to make until you figure out what's right. So right. you can't be you can't be um, put down by those things. Right. Now, do you want to grab a painting? We have a few paintings yeah, to show. Yeah, I've got show. a couple. I've got my big one. We'll start with a big one. How about? This is one of my favorites. And this is a new one. Yeah, this is one of the newer ones. This is a see if hopefully it'll show up. Yeah, yeah I think so. Beautiful. This one is called Curious. This is one of my recent ones. I really don't actually have a lot of work with me right now. Right, because you have it. In I have a places. show right now. Yeah, we have a show. Yeah. Um, but this. This year is the first year that I've done a whole series of equine art. It's really only been since last fall. Right. So um, I do have a good collection of equine paintings, and this has been the first time, you know. So that's actually been, you've been a catalyst for that. It <laughs> yeah. helped me, to, you know, like it's hard. I'm, I'm a creative person, but I have, I lack some focus. <laughs> but well, you really pushed me in the direction too and inspired me, your business and everything. And I started with the painting of your horse. Right. And well, with, Rovi. Yes, yep. with Rovi. And yep. with Beth Ann's mm -hmm. poem in the background. Yes. And that was the beginning. And so it's sort of taken off from there, mm -hmm. which has been great. But I love the the colors, and so you kind of did a lot of darker colors in the beginning with backgrounds and the sepia washes, and then the lighter style just kind of, was the iris one the first one you did with the lighter style, or did you just um, kind of play in, with the... Yeah, in this series, um, I sort of have like a push-pull, I really like the dark and the earth tones mm -hmm. and, and everything and they're sort of just separate things sometimes I like to do something that's nice and light with the dripping paint and everything and I sort of bounce back and forth right, because right. I'm drawn to both right. and I, I tend as an artist not to do the same thing over and over mm -hmm. I do explore something different every time I do a piece you right. know Learn you have some new. more pieces. Do you have any? Well, yes. I have a flower child. I do. She's my only portrait I have because she's going tomorrow to an art show. So oh, oh is this I one still going to the Kabang? Yeah. yeah. Nice. So she was like, um, I love to do portraits of mm -hmm. people as well. And she was one of the first of the people that I've done um, since I got out of college and started mm -hmm. my business. So I sort of used her as my mascot. Yeah. I yeah. Love it. I, I want um, I do, I know I did it the year Ivy was born, so oh. I think it's a 2009, mm -hmm. um, but I've mostly kept her because she's been my, my mascot for, right. like, my logo and everything. She sort of reflects a lot of what I love, you know, mm -hmm. and, and really she does inspired look a little, by nature. I mean, it's not you, but it looks no. enough like you that it's kind of interesting. Yeah, I can use it bit. as, like, the right. front, you right. know. Right. So, yeah, she's going in a show tomorrow, but I do have her around. I only have a couple paintings around today. Right, yeah, because you had a big showing at our local library. Yeah, which was really great. You've been and doing a lot of different shows. Yeah, I've been busy locally, which has mm -hmm. been nice because um, it's a really great community, and I haven't done a lot of shows in this town, mm -hmm. but it's been really wonderful. Yeah. I do, I have, um, 
I guess I can talk a little bit. I have one of my charcoal drawings. Oh yeah, here. that's right. It's your inspiration. Yeah, right? I think um, what began sort of my um, passion for artwork was a studying about Leonardo da Vinci. Mm -hmm. He was um, one of my favorite artists, and I loved always in his books how would they would show the. Um, preliminary sketches of some of right. his great paintings mm -hmm. and he would draw horses a lot he studied horses he loved horses right. and um, I would look at those and think oh like that's how a painting starts okay you know there's I can there's something that. I can connect to in the sketches you know right. I can't connect to a grand finished painting if I don't understand right. how to do that but mm -hmm. I can connect to a drawing right. and a great artist still starts at a drawing Mm -hmm. You know, so to me that was like, okay, that was the stepping stone, that was the understanding for me. So um, I sort of did this one as like an homage to right. Da Vinci. I did it in his style. I started doing a lot of drawings like this when I was younger with the charcoal, the, the base um, and then the charcoal and, and the chalk, which is how he started a lot now of his is drawings. this one on your website for sale? It is. Yeah. And what's this one called? Um, this is just a conversano lip okay. right? Yeah. Did you do I this after a segue? The stallion? Um, no, I mean it wasn't, but it is a conversano lip or stallion. Oh, so okay. Just like in a magazine kind of thing. Yeah, I just yeah. found a photograph that I really yeah. liked mm -hmm. and everything. Um, I, I'm always doing a lot of research and everything. But and I love drawing horses and I love drawing people, portraits in both, and I also do other animals, but I'm just, I've always been drawn to portraiture, I've always been drawn to faces and expressions mm -hmm. because they're, I mean, they're difficult, but there's something about if you can capture, you know, if you can capture a face or if you mm -hmm. can capture the life, there's, there's nothing, you know, as rewarding as putting that sort of emotion or that sort of life into a piece of artwork, you Yeah, know? that's really hard. I never drew faces. <laughs> I would draw the headless horseman <laughs> all the time when I was a kid. They looked terrible. <laughs> well, I, I mean, was like, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you have that that desire to capture a face, you do. If you don't, you don't. And a lot of artists, even great artists, just draw a silhouette of a face. Right. Or, you yeah. know, I mean, I think it's better to be reserved about it rather than to draw it off. <laughs> Right. Draw face off. That yeah. Be, yeah, I mean, humans, uh, we're drawn to human faces. We're mm. drawn to faces, expressions. And yeah, I don't care if you know anything about our art or not, but you can see if, if something's wrong. Right, you right. Know, like, oh, yeah, that's not sure something that. you mess with. Right. For and sure. faces are so uneven. Like, I can look at my face in the mirror and I'm like, how? Like, I always smile higher on one side. I always, like, one, one eye always squints more than the other. It's just your natural. Yeah, and it's easy, so you it can, is. It's, and so if you're like too perfect in a picture, it's like ah, oh, that's yeah, not quite it right. doesn't. It yeah. doesn't work. You have to. You have to just sort of break it down into shapes. You really can't look at it in terms of oh, like this is the symmetrical like eyes, balance. this is the mouth, because it just never looks that way. You right. just have to separate things and not even think about it as a face. Yeah, it's very yeah. interesting. But um, I, re I remember like really getting that about the how un like symmetrical, very asymmetrical people's faces are. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my first portraits um, when I was in college, I did of Joe, my husband. Right, right. He was yeah, my I know. I've boyfriend seen that then. Yeah. And I had such trouble with it. I painted it over and over and over. And finally, um, I had to grid it out because I could not understand why I could never get it to look like him. So I would sometimes if you draw you can do a little grid and then uh -huh. you can understand like the measuring of it better right. as the you draw it. Yeah. And I remember trying it and it was like his mouth was completely on one side, completely different from the other side. And I'm thinking, that's just got to be wrong. It's got to be but wrong. Then when you drew but it. then when I drew it out, I was like, wait, that looks like him, you yeah. know? And it was just sort of this like, oh, you can't just think of it in terms of eyes, nose, mouth. It right. just really isn't. Yeah. And but I got that painting into a show, and then it got awards, and it was at the college for a whole year in another office. So mm -hmm. it sort of like to me that was like, okay, you know, people and faces and and um, portraits is something that I I want to master. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Because I have a, a spark of it. You know, it's like right. you have to have the spark, and then you have to study and study to really understand. Right. 
you know. But yeah, I've lo I love that, you know, ca capturing that. And you did a lot of digital art too for a while. I but did, you don't really do yeah. that much anymore, do you? Um, well, you know, it was great. I did some illustration work. And it's it's good because it's fast working. If somebody wants something changed, you just move layers around. Right. And I really do enjoy it. Um, I just found that sitting at the computer, it was difficult. Um, I just started to detach from the creative yeah. process a little. Yeah. So like canvas yeah. and texture. And, and paint. I just always just like there's something about paint, you know. Oh, I love the paint. texture of it. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. working with it. Yeah. You know the way it pulls on a canvas and just sort of that raw connection to the creation mm -hmm. of the artwork that I was really missing and mm -hmm. so I just sort of you know I sit at the computer enough I'm gonna drop this I'm not gonna be an mm -hmm. illustrator I'm gonna just pursue what I really want to do which is the fine art mm -hmm. and so when I moved away from that I was really happy you know I really enjoy it I'll I will do digital work still I do logo work here and there you know right, right. Um, and it, it's fun, it's great, it's a good skill. I'm so glad I spent time on it, but fine art is really kind of where my heart is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you working on anything now? You just finished. Oh yeah, I just took my, f I did a deer painting for yeah. my husband. That was new, <laughs> yes. it was very beautiful. I've never painted a deer, I did a white-tailed deer for him. Mm -hmm. He's been bugging me forever. Like, mm -hmm. you've done so many paintings for other people too. I had a little gap in between. I just finished a commission, so I thought, okay, I'm gonna take this opportunity to paint yeah. a deer. Job, You're probably gonna end up painting a lot of deer. I, I have like, another oh, no. one. Yeah, my father-in-law wants one now, so I'm starting. I'm gonna have one. to get one for my husband. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I'll do. I just like what I paint. I'll just like <laughs> repaint it. I'm like Lydia did this. You you have to love it. <laughs> no, I like really liked the deer. I mm -hmm. I found myself collecting about like 50 photos of deer after that. Like. Their faces They're are beautiful. just very captivating. Um, in, to me, it's like painting a horse or painting a dog or a cat or a deer. It's all the same to me, you know? Yeah. You're painting the same features. They're just in different relations right. to each other. So painting the deer, you know, um, my mother watched me do it in process, and she thought, I don't know how you can paint a deer. I'm like, well, it's just the same thing as a horse. It's just different measurements. Right. You right. know, I mean, I, I was wondering, I was like, is it going to come out like with a horse a you know? a <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, to me, like, eyes, eyes are eyes, you know. Right. It's, you know, as long as you take the time to study what you're painting and you take the time on the drawing to understand it. Right. It, it's really not that different to no. me. Anyways, right. I don't, some people might find it different, but from human to an animal, to me, it just doesn't seem that different. No. You know. No. Yeah. And even if I paint a person, uh, a horse or an animal or a deer or something like that, they all tend to have similar characteristics because I have a style. I mean, right. like, there's no getting around. I have a way of approaching a painting. But, yeah, I, I like that. I love the, the face, you know, no yeah. matter what it is. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Do you have another one you want to show? Oh, I have Beth Ann. Oh, is that Pepin? Yes. <laughs> okay, she She's my know. only other one around. Oh, I right. couldn't bring glass. I, I hope it doesn't have shine on it. I couldn't bring any glass to the bank um, oh. show oh, that I have I mean, right you now. Probably. Yeah, see, I and, it, and you can it. see it on the website too. This is uh, Beth Ann is my mother-in-law who owns Rovondio, the uh, Andalusian that I ride. Um, you'll see all over the website the beautiful little bay, and she loves ravens. She's yes, obsessed with ravens. She has so, friends that are ravens. I'm gonna like move it in. You can. I uh, hope you can see a little bit of detail. Yeah, this is a pastel drawing. That's her so with her that raven. that one came out really, it's so different than all your others. Though. Yeah, I've done some pastel work, mostly for commissions. Um, yeah. But that's, you know, I haven't done a whole bunch of it. Um, but that one, I don't know. But it really um, captured a lot of, it's very interesting. Because it's like being able to capture something about someone that they don't necessarily want you to see. Yeah. Like, like how... I think you were talking about how it like kind of captures her like under the surface of what you see. Yeah, of you how know? she feels. Right. She said it captures something about her like, you know, um, 
is how she reflects on life, or you know, mm -hmm. you know. So she's a real interesting, you know. She's a real thinker. She's a great poet. Mm -hmm. You know, you can see that in her poetry. Right. And to me, I've always thought, you know, her connection to the animals and her understanding of poetry and nature that she's a very you know great person in so many ways and she really inspired me with the painting of Roby or her beautiful poetry and um, I had photographed her mm -hmm. at a, a whole year before I did this drawing I had this idea and I asked her you know she was reluctant to pose <laughs> for me and I thought you know she really needs a portrait with her animal you know yeah and just for, not necessarily for her, just for myself to practice something that I've wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And so I finally had some space and decided to sit down and do the drawing. And to me, it, the emotional connection to something's important. Because I don't, I mess, you know, I start painting and I don't always finish it. I don't always have success. I have to really be in the right mindset I have to be connected to something but there was something about this drawing you know with all the history behind it it just sort of you know I started it it, it made sense I never messed up on it it just sort of came out, came out. you know the yeah. way I wanted so yeah. that was really nice uh, I felt like I had a connection to it and it mm -hmm. was something new you know to add the animal in to the portrait with the with yeah. the person, which is something I hadn't done, yeah, and I just feel like her nature and um, the the raven there are mm -hmm. a little similar, right? You now right, and everything, right. so there was something about it that just mm -hmm. worked, you know. Yeah, and the perfect. poet, because you know, yeah, we think of that too with the raven. Yeah, which yeah, because nice. Beth Ann does. Uh, if you've gone on my website, Beth Ann does all the poetry on the backs of my shirts, which makes them popular because there's yeah. a connection there. If it's yeah. just a design, yeah, there's lots of shirts with designs, but you add the connection between whatever it is we're talking about and then it's the visual and the emotional and I think that's what makes it unique. Yeah, for sure. You know, you're telling a story. Right. For sure. And, yeah. so, and people understand it, you know. It, it's a poem about a horse and the horse people get that, you know. Right. We're connected to horses for mm -hmm. a reason. It's yeah. a it's a deep emotional connection, so I think it captures that. Yeah, horses sure. are, are make us very emotional, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, you know, and it's like for some people, it's just they're so important, you know. Mm -hmm. it, they're so important as everything, you know. If you're upset, you can ride your horse. It's you know a friendship. You ride your horse and you get upset. Yes, <laughs> that happens too. But you know, it's like a peacefulness that you can't mm -hmm. get from anywhere else, yeah. which is you know the same as artwork. That's why you say riding horses like art because right. it's about a feeling. It's not something you can write down concrete laws about. You know, it's mm -hmm. an emotional connection. Yeah, it's a relationship, and you have to be in the moment, which yeah. it's hard to learn if you're. You know, when you're competing or you have a goal, because horses yeah. aren't goal oriented, no. that's really tricky. Um, but but very rewarding when you can finally like let yeah, it go. Yeah, when you can understand that and have a true respect, because I mean, they're powerful animals, extremely mm -hmm. powerful animals that let us sit on them and communicate them with them. You know, like control such, them all yeah, the time. Yeah, it's and, like man, I don't like being controlled at all yeah. at any moment. And then this person sits on you and tells you what to do like all the time. I mean, yeah, that's, it's pretty amazing that they yeah. let us do that. Yeah, for sure. And that's what's unique about the relationship with the horse because. Um, they sort of condescend to allow that, you know, mm -hmm. and they really respond to the person who has an equal partnership right. with them because of that, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that's why those the, that your t-shirts and are so great, and Beth Ann's work with them, you know, it makes them special because you're capturing yeah. that something that isn't captured in everything. Right. You know? Yeah. Like, I mean, I've had a lot right. of people break down into tears at trade shows, and I go in, they start reading the poems, and they come to one, and it's always a different one. It's never yeah. always the same one. Mm -hmm. The begin the dance are very popular, but sometimes it's you know the heartbeat hoofbeat or you know the dog one. I mean, they're just they just start crying. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I <Yeah>. help you. <laughs> you know. I feel like a little bad, but yeah, but, but I mean, they, I mean, they, it's in a good way, you know. Yeah. They're crying for a good reason, but um, it's, it's, it's really cool. I think it's really great. Yeah, yeah. I mean that connection means a lot. To yeah, people. yeah. Dogs, especially too, they live mm -hmm. with us, but 
Definitely, there's something about that horse relationship. It, it goes a little bit deeper because the horse's nature isn't necessarily just to please like a dog's mm -hmm. is. It's easier. Right. A dog's forgive so much more, but a horse is a lot more independent and they're a lot more noble of a creature. They really uh, only give so much because, mm -hmm. you know, of their nature. You have to so, ask right. <laughs> yeah. So if you have that kind of connection with a horse, it's it's a sort of a deeper relationship in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Maybe not as close as a dog, you know. Um, that's that really special relationship with a dog. They're just different, you know. Yeah. They really can't be compared. No. No, definitely. Sure. It's very interesting. Now... Um, one thing I was thinking too is, um, but I'd love to get your perspective. I, I forgot about this when we were talking before. Is when we're performing, and, and see, like when we perform now, I'm on the horse. I'm still in the same position that I've always been in. I'm the rider, riding the horse, you know, doing all this stuff. But you're on the ground. I've done it a little bit, but not as much as you have. Like as far as you're on the ground, you're the dancer, connected to the rider and the horse. Yeah. And, like, I, I was wondering the other day, I was like, I wonder what it's kind of like. Like, does she even, like, process or think about, uh, like, like you're trying to connect with the horse? Like, are you trying to connect with Dow, or are you just following the movement, or are you more reading the rider? Or are you just, because of all these years, you just kind of just go with the flow, basically? I feel like, um, in the moment of performing, I can read Dow easier than mm -hmm. I can read you mm -hmm. because he, you're reading him, right? So you know, yeah. Like, no, I, I don't, don't have to worry words. about you at all. Yeah, I don't even have to really think about you because I know you're all set. Yeah, and I can move quicker. I can adjust, and you know, it's more my responsibility to adjust because he's an animal in this situation, and he's going to take things how he takes them, and we have to go with what he, how he takes it. You right. know, he really sort of sets the standard. I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So I actually definitely connect more to him, I think, yeah. when we're performing. I'm always sort of, he's in my peripheral, I'm reading how he feels, I'm sort of kind of like judging whether he's going to do the next thing on time or right. what's going to happen, you <laughs> right. know? And f he's really good for the, for the most part. <clears throat> but if he gets startled, I just sort of try to move with him, right? you know, and not try to do anything that would frighten him. Make like, him I mean, we have that huge big long piece of fabric in, yeah. in the routine so mm -hmm. if I feel like that like if it starts to make a lot of noise or something like right, that yeah. I can read him and I can sort of pull it down a little you know right, like right. do little things but yeah definitely I think that um my my interaction is more with him right yeah on the ground yeah and we and we perform so much together that it's great because we are, are are connected like we yeah we, we react the same and we yeah. think the same a little bit when we're choreographing and stuff like that so it is like it's a lot easier because like I've tried to perform with other people a little bit at times and they don't have the same reaction and so then you're kind of like worried about the person trying to read the person and the horse and it's really like it's it's hard. It's yeah, really, that's really difficult if you don't can't trust that the person knows what they're doing. So I can imagine like there are some other people out in the world that I've seen that that there's it's a dancer and a horse and yeah. a rider. But what I always feel like's missing is that the dancer is not a rider. The dancer yeah. is not a horse person. So the dancer is doing all these like really fancy things and they look beautiful on their own and then the horse and the rider look beautiful and everything on their own but the connection it's a little like it's a little, it's not, it's a little forced. Yeah. I don't know it's just interesting. So I always like that that it kind of feels like and I know Dow looks to you like when we're in the ring he doesn't get as nervous because you're with him. But whereas if we're in the ring by ourselves, he's like, he's like, oh my God, you know, he, he's nervous by himself. But with the, with you, it's like security. Someone's on the ground, someone's with me. And yeah. he kind of like, he looks for you, Yeah, you know, he and he kind of knows. Yeah. yeah. I think he starts to like really learn the routine yeah. for sure too. He knows the music, he knows where I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I think that, that and I think for... I, we've been performing together for over a decade, so I feel like we know, you yeah, know, yeah. we we know uh, we've dealt with so many different things, 
you know so when it gets to that point even we've been on horseback together you know yeah, so we yeah. know yeah how to read each other yeah I never worry about that no. you know it's it's an automatic sort of thing but yeah I think that probably is the difference I've seen a lot of horses and riders and I mean dancers and horses and I think you know oh I wish I could do some of the things the dancers do but um sometimes I feel there there is an element that's like yeah there just was something like another some, level right of yeah. understanding I don't know if it's if it is the connection you know I've always um, grown up with horses and had that connection too or if it's just the way we set up because we've been choreographing for so long you right. know we sort yeah. of really we really connect to the music Mm -hmm. really are so always find it so important to um, make those music transitions clear and sharp and we always right. hit them yeah. you know so important um, but yeah that's what I'm always happy with when I see something we've done is you know I think there's a connection there even if we're not as grand, even if we're yeah even if know? it's not like the top level of the top level of everything you know yeah. it's just it's like the whole, it's the whole story. Yeah, we're you know, connecting. a good time. Yeah, making so a, a piece of artwork yeah, out yeah. of it, for sure. Because, you know, that's sort of both our nature, you know. Mm -hmm. We want to create something. We want to mm -hmm. deliver emotion. And um, I always feel like that, you know, that's what we're good at. You yeah. Know, we can do that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited. We're going to be in a, uh, do our own little music videos here in the future. Yeah. Um, have some people interested in helping us with that. So hoping to share some some new things with everybody. Yeah. Excited. We're always <laughs> the wheels yeah. are always <laughs> creating. creating something new. We gotta I do know. this I, while I, we're I, young. I wear you out. I know. <laughs> I know. Honey, we're gonna do this next. Oh my god. <laughs> no, you're the motivator. It's good. That's the things that I need. You know. Your focus. <laughs> and it's good because it keeps me pushing, you know. Yeah, that's so good for me. <laughs> well, do you think that's good? Yeah. I think that's good. Awesome. I think we've been talking for a while. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> you know, I'm sure we'll we'll do another interview again at some point. There's so many stories and so many things that we can share with you, but I just wanted to um, give you a background on Lydia and her art, and she's definitely focusing uh, as being an artist and she's such an accomplished rider I mean she's competed through Grand Prix as well which also makes it easier to perform with her as well but um, we are going to be promoting a lot of her artwork and dancing and performing together you can um, find her artwork online at uh, LydiaRoseFineArt.com yeah. and Lydia Rose Art on Facebook yeah. um, and all of her stuff's on there and you can purchase prints online and if you need anything like uh, special like commissions you can contact her it's Lydia Rose Lydia Rose dot art and G dot art but you can find me email. through my website pretty easily yeah it's you know. pretty easy yeah yeah awesome yeah well, thank you great. well thank you for joining us who are you are you Ivy <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you gonna wave to the camera say hi oops <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, you're just gonna make me do it. See, there you are, right there. <laughs> Jump. <laughs> there she is. Are you going to be a dancer someday? <laughs> that looks like more you're going to fall down. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> hey, that's nice. Ooh, goosey goosey. Good nice job. snake arms. Yeah, both of her parents are. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna have to bunch of music. Yeah, dancing. She's dancing. I bet she's